The U.S. marking the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks this week, remembering the chaos that began with two planes flying into the World Trade Center towers. Ground Zero has since been rebuilt, now a single tower that includes a 9-11 memorial and museum. Many people in Kern County have a personal connection to that day through friends or family who were in New York. For a local businesswoman, her father was working in the North Tower on September 11th. I sat down with him in 2020 on a visit to Bakersfield to talk about his memories from the deadliest terror attack in U.S. history. Beautiful September morning. Dr. Alan Sokolow was an executive with Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield back in 2001, working on the 19th floor of the North Tower at the World Trade Center. And I remember coming out of the subway that morning because it was really spectacularly pretty. He had an early meeting that day and was wrapping up when he felt something. It's a little bit like an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Uh, the building moved pretty substantially. You knew it was not normal. Right before that, you heard um, like a jet engine noise, uh, kind of like a plane taking off. The jet engines revving high, you know, high RPMs. Then he looked out the window. You could see um, aluminum uh, pieces of metal filtering, floating down um, in the sun. And um, it was clear that something had happened that was not good. He called his wife and told her that he was coming home. As one of the only executives on the floor at that moment, Sokolo said he began moving people towards the exits and into the stairwells. Just like a fire drill. Everybody, you know, a lot of people had coffee and they're walking along talking and just, you know, exiting like you would in a fire drill. They didn't look upset or, and I didn't feel upset. I felt, you know, a little concerned. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, uh, you could smell coming through the ventilation system, the smell of something like jet fuel, like a kerosene kind of smell. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> that was sort of the second big indicator that something really bad was happening. The evacuation was very slow as firefighters passed the group heading up the tower while they descended. When they reached the 12th or 13th floor, Sokolo said those crews were returning with burn victims. It was during this time he thinks he heard the second plane hit the south tower. It's ringing like a gong, right? Like being inside a bell. Just this, you know, literally somebody like ringing a big bell. And I think that must have been the other plane hitting. The descent continued. As they reached the fifth floor, a flood of emotion, you might say, overcame them when water started flowing down the steps. And that just triggered everyone, and they started to run. The people in front who saw the water coming just said, this is too much, and they just took off. The crowd was quickly directed through a basement area that was blackened by smoke and fire, believed to be the aftermath from the plane hitting the tower 90 floors up. There was like a fireball that came down the, the elevator shafts and blew out through those elevator doors oh, and wow. burned some people on that floor. Sokolo finally emerged on the other side of the plaza and got his first real look at the towers. We turned around and there was a fire on both of the towers. Dr. Sokolo walked across the street to the Millennium Hotel where a triage was being set up. An ER doctor for 20 years in Norwalk, Connecticut, he helped a dozen or more people that were wandering out of the tower complex with injuries from minor to serious, including one victim who saw one of the planes hit the tower. You know, I saw the plane coming in and it hit the elevator lobby, the lobby exploded, and he had a blast injury. He had, his shoulder was, very badly injured. His um, he had gotten some stomach wounds, and uh, I bandaged him and put him in the ambulance and um, sent him off to the trauma center. A short time later, he remembers looking up and staring at the top of the South Tower. It looked like it was kind of like an ice cream cone melting. The top was kind of dripping and you know wiggling a little bit, and all of a sudden it started to turn, tilt, drop, and came down. The noise and the, and the rush of the air and so forth that <clears throat> you could hear gave you a, enough of an alarm to know you had to get, you, you get, had to get out of here, right? So we all just started running. And um, I ran around the hotel and um, <clears throat> heard, the, you know, heard the blast coming and just kind of tucked myself in between an ambulance that was parked on the street, I think, and the wall of the Millennial Hotel. And the blast came, and, and that was that giant white cloud that you saw in the video. We were in 
just darkness for minutes, several minutes. There was a moment when I thought, I've, I've killed myself by staying here too long, and uh, I'm gonna suffocate. Um, absolute black, open your eyes, can't see anything. It's not even like white, it's just, Nothing, no color. When it finally started to settle, Sokolo began walking to another hospital not far away. But not long after, he saw the dust cloud from the second tower coming down. When I got outside the hospital, I could see all the dust and the paper and everything that had come down. I, I knew I needed to go uh, uptown to uh, to Grand Central Station, but I'd already figured out that I was no more than 30 miles from home. If I had to walk the whole way, I was walking the whole way. He jumped on a bus that was headed out of the area that dropped him at the outer edge of that dust cloud. The movie The Wizard of Oz, when it changed from black and white to color, mm -hmm. it's exactly what it looked like. It was just nothing black and white and then people and color. He hitched a ride in a pickup truck to Grand Central Terminal. The trains had been shut down, but were now running again. Dr. Sokolo wasn't sure exactly when he finally got home, but phone service had been sketchy all day. His secretary, Gloria McCarthy, was able to get word to his family, including his daughter, Morgan, who was in school in California. As for the man with a blast injury that he treated back at Ground Zero, he asked him to call his wife for him, and late in the day, he was finally able to get through. First, she thought I was scamming her that I was making up a phony call to tell him that you know tell her that I had taken care of him. I said no, I, I took care of him. I put him in the ambulance. I sent him to the hospital. He did not. He was not in the building when it went down. Of the nearly 3,000 fatalities, 10 of the victims worked with Dr. Sokolo, including one man who stayed behind to make sure everyone got out. Mm -hmm. I saw him as I went out, and he never made it out. So he stayed in there until the building went down. He has since returned to Ground Zero and visited the memorial. Memories of that day that Dr. Sokolo says will never really go away. Now this Saturday, there will be a special five-hour edition of ABC News beginning at 5 a.m. our time, commemorating the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Now because of that, we will obviously not have our regular 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. weekend newscasts. We will have a special digital news version that morning at 6 and 8.